purpose of this video is to talk through some points on what affects house prices. We have got an article on this subject and you can find the link below this video to read at your own leisure. This video will focus on different points to the article to really give you a good understanding of this subject. When someone asks the price of a house, what they're asking is how many pounds does it take to buy that house? Why do we say that? That's quite a strange thing to say. But when you think about historic prices, it isn't. Because when you're looking at historic prices over the recent decades, up until the 2000s, you're actually seeing the value of a house performance against the pound note. What do we mean by that? Well, in the 1950s, house prices were a lot less than what they are today. Why is that? Because the pound notes could buy so much more back then than what they do now. So the fact that inflation is deflating the value of these pound notes means that it now takes a lot more pound notes to buy the same house, which gives the effect that the house price is going up, when really the value of the pound notes are going down, so it takes more of them to buy that house. So don't forget, when you look at house prices over a given amount of time, you're actually seeing the performance of the pound versus the house. If you were to value the house prices in barrels of oil, in the 1940s, it might, for argument's sake, take 15 barrels of oil to buy that house, and you might not get two dissimilar price fluctuations to how many barrels of oil it might take now. Same can be said about ounces of gold. If you valued that house in ounces of gold, it might not be too much different to what it is now in ounces of gold. Something else we need to explore when it comes to what affects house prices, it actually does, it is quite contingent on what country you're talking about. A lot of people might not know this, but in Japan, there was a free generation mortgage. So a person would take this mortgage out and it would be over sort of a hundred years. So his children's children would still be paying his mortgage. The reason for that is because Japan had a huge economic boom. House prices were going through the roof. Speculation was rife and banks were lending a lot of money and house prices shot up. Whereas if you look for a country like Germany, now Germany is one of the richest countries in the world, yet its house prices have been very flat over the same period where the UK has seen booms and busts, just like America. So we will explore the countries a little bit more in order to work out what affects the value of houses. If we analyse the German housing market and compare it to the UK, we might actually get some more clues as to what affects the price of houses. We've already established that the German house price movements have been quite flat over time, whereas the UK has been just like the USA and has seen some booms and busts and has been quite volatile. Some of you might think that the reason for that is differences in population density, but the studies show that per square kilometre in the UK there's an estimated 240 people. If you look at the same statistics in Germany you will get a similar figure, so the clue isn't really in population density. There is a significant difference in attitude. German people tend to see a house as a place to live in, not a way of making money, whereas in the UK there's been a lot more speculation. The banks also have different attitudes. The banks in Germany are a lot more cautious and you're expected to put down about 30 to 35% as a deposit on a house, whereas in the UK that can be as low as 10%. Once people buy a house in Germany, they tend to stay in that house, and it might be to do with the buying costs. The buying costs are around 8% and are aimed at the buyer, whereas in the UK it's around 4%. So UK people move around a lot more in their lifetime than Germans. So that may well be some of the reasons as to why there's been such a significant indifference between the two nations, because both are quite affluent countries in Europe. Germany also has one of the lowest home ownership rates in the EU at around 43%. So it's obvious that Germany has a very distinct lack of speculation in the housing market, which may well be why there's been flat prices throughout time. When we look into the cost of building a house, it's quite clear to see that house price movements could actually technically stay flat over time. Excluding the cost of the land, as a general rule of thumb, the cost of building a house is roughly 50% labour, 50% materials. Now materials has been, over the last sort of 20 years, relatively flat, which means when you adjust this for inflation, the real value of these materials or the real price has actually fallen over time. 
Now why might that be? Well we've got improved technologies now which means things like house bricks are able to be produced a lot cheaper. Also better sourcing of materials all help to combine to bring the actual prices of the materials down. Labour costs have gone up because of inflation. People are now being paid more wages than what they was 20 years ago. But with labour costs going up and material costs going down, they do sort of cancel each other out. So it technically is possible to have flat house price movements over time. Now some of you might think that the reason why house prices go up over time is because of running out of land in the UK. But studies show that only around 10% of the UK land is actually urbanised. So there is a lot of land to build houses on. So it's not to do with running out of land, especially not in the UK. Something you will find is the trend in house prices over time has a positive gradient. And we have like an average where it is slowly ascending upwards. What you will find is there will be short deviations away from this average. So you might have a boom in house prices, a bust where it goes below the average, but whatever happens, we always seem to return to this average. Now, with that knowledge, if this was a stock or a share, what traders would be looking to do is buy the dips. So if you wanted to make money out of property and get a good time to buy the house, what you'd want to be doing is taking advantage of dips. So any sort of, not crash, but any pullbacks within that, you would want to be taking advantage of and buying. Now that pretty much concludes the lesson on the video. You may have noted that we have ignored a lot of obvious points such as population. Now with immigration being quite high in the UK now, especially to what it was back years ago, that adds to the demand of houses. With better medical medication and medical intervention, people are now living longer as well, which means that there's more demand on the houses. Household constituents have actually changed as well. Back in the 1940s, etc., there would have been a lot more people living under one roof, whereas now it's quite common with divorces, etc., that less people are living under the same roof. So for the amount of people, we now require more houses. If you want to know more about these sorts of things and also the wider economy and how that is affected by house prices, why the UK government is currently really pushing through policies to help first-time buyers, then read the article, click on the link below this video. Hope you've enjoyed and learned from this lesson and thank you for your time.